thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We yield to your presence. We yield to your heart, your love, your goodness. And we thank you, Lord, that you can have your way with us tonight, Lord. We yield our will to yours. Lord, do with us whatever you want to do tonight. We're willing vessels, Lord. Our hearts are wide open. Do your work, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. That was some Friday night worship. That was good stuff. You know, um, I know you know this already. Reiterate that they don't, the, the team doesn't come up here with all this pre, pre planned, uh, every word they're going to say. It's all by the Spirit. So, that what you heard there has never been sung on the earth before. That those instruments with those, with those lyrics, with those uh, notes, has never been sung on the earth before. So, that's why it's so important to flow in the prophetic. Amen? When you worship. So that's why you got to enter in and receive because that was for that was for right now and that was for us. Amen. Amen. All right. So tomorrow morning uh, we're going to be back here at 10. Eight, well, we're going to probably have worship a little early. So it says 10, but we're going to be here early. So come early and uh, have some fun. Now your pastor's going to understand. He'll be all right. He'll he'll you know he. He doesn't see you out there Sunday morning. He'll be all right. Uh, but we will be here. It's our last meeting in Hawaii this time. So please come. Uh, we're going to have a great time. And it's just so it's always such an intimate time on Sunday as we wrap up a conference. So that'll be tomorrow. And then let me just mention real quick some events that are coming up. If you, in case you want to drive to Kalamazoo, Michigan. <laughs> but for those who are watching uh, Kalamazoo, uh, we're so excited about this because the last time we were in Michigan, it was sitting room only. People were sitting all around the side. So we're, we, uh, Kevin said we got to go back and uh, uh, we got a bigger venue though. So uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, May 3rd. Then we're off to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Branson, Missouri is in May as well. Then in Pennsylvania in June and also in June, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Nashville, Tennessee, Waupon, Wisconsin, uh, Dalton, Georgia. And then in October, we're having a uh, powerful spirit school in, in Switzerland, South Africa, and Germany. So we are excited. Uh, it's our first time as a team. Kevin's been there before, but it's our first time uh, as a team to go to South Africa, Cape Town. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And um, also, um, I want to do this very quickly because I'm told that a lot of people here uh, have been asking about the fellowships. Where are they? First of all, if you want to know where they are, uh, you can always go to the website. And it, on the top right-hand corner, it says find a fellowship. So you can just uh, put in your address there. But, uh, Pastor, uh, you, where is your fellowship at? It's one in uh, Iroquois. Okay. On the beach. Iroquois? Uh, one in Kalihi area. Okay. And then there's another one in Palamas Settlement. Palamas? Okay, so you heard that. And where's my other fellowship in, in the Honolulu area? I saw her earlier. Or, yes. How about you, sir? Yes, that's right. S excuse me? Couple A. Would you just stand up so everybody can see how big you are? No. They have a fellowship in Couple A, and I just met uh, them earlier. I met him earlier, and uh, they, have a, they have a whole business card with Warrior Fellowship on it and everything. They're ready to go. And so uh, please, uh, please introduce yourself to this couple uh, so uh, you can have it. Uh, you can join them there. Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. Tell me the name of that place again. Tell me the name of the place. Eva Beach. Eva Beach. So there you go. So those people that stood, uh, you know, you know, please go find them. And uh, there's, there's, they're in Maui. They're in this, this, whole, this island here. I, I believe there's one in Kauai, but don't quote me on that. I think we met them last time. So anyway, just plug in, get involved. And uh, if, 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 you're, if you're not clicking uh, and understand where it all is, you can always go on the website, like I said. So amen. amen. All right. You ready to receive an offering? All right, well, we're thankful that you're uh, participating in the offering. And like Kevin said earlier, 
We're always excited uh, to give people opportunity to sow uh, into what God is doing. Uh, we don't want to ever um, not give you that opportunity. Sometimes we do the reverse offering. Sometimes, Kevin, uh, there's times where Kevin says, the Lord told me don't take an offering here. Just let the people uh, give another way, uh, but we always want to uh, let you know that we're uh, that you can give, and you uh, have the little card on your on your chair if you want to give through the envelope. But thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for giving. Many of you are students. Many of you are in fellowships, and uh, we're just thankful for you. Many of you are partners. But thank you for being a part, and thank you for sowing into this ministry. It's good soil, isn't it? It's ministry doing some stuff, and so thank you for being a part. If you want to give online, the numbers. On the screen, but let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to give and just to be a part of uh, releasing from our hands to yours, Lord, this gift, this offering, Lord. And it's a, it's a privilege for us to do something for you, Lord, to give something back to you. And Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Chris. All right. Well, I feel the power of God, and I don't know how Kevin's going to do it tonight, so I'm going to be real fast and get out of here. Listen, we have about 50 divine appointments left that we need to be somebody to take. All right? Paper bags full of food. But there are divine appointments, right? So if just all the people that uh, just stood up and everything, listen, let's get these bags out tonight. There's about 50 more. You listen, right at the beach, there is... Uh, tons of people that are hungry right now. They've been swimming all day. And like I said, we've been going out every night talking to people just like Kevin and Kathy has taught us. And there's groups of people down there. So uh, let's get these out tonight. If there's any left, I'm going to grab some and do it myself. I'm going to go down to the beach and hand them out. And listen, we can do this. Amen. We are doing this. And amen. We're doing this. And listen, just like Kevin and Kathy said, the next time you go to the store and you go to grab a can of Spam, Grab another can of Spam, right? And begin to start a little little uh, shelf. Keep putting on the shelf. And when you are out and about and you're and like uh, Dr. Ayan does, she puts some bags in her car. When you're out and about and you see someone in need, let's give that bag to people. And just like we've talked about, let's give to someone that cannot give back to us. Amen. And you will see when you step out and you use this bag of food, the love of God will speak through you. And that's what it is. This is the love of God. And when you give it to someone, they say, why are you doing this? And you say, I'm so glad you asked because Jesus Christ loves you and it has a plan for your life. And you heard Kevin say this all the time, but it just comes down to the love of God. People want to be heard. People want to know that they're loved, that they're valued, and that they're safe. And that's what the Warrior Fellowships are about. We're going to get these people saved. We're going to get them discipled. They're going to come into your Warrior Fellowship, and they're going to feel safe. They're going to feel valued, and they're going to know, you know what? There's a purpose for my life. There's a book written in heaven that I have to fulfill. We need them to get back in society. Amen? Amen. All right. Love you guys. Pastor Mike. Thank you, sir. Well, on behalf of Kevin and Kathy, I just want to thank all the partners that are here. You know, it's, it's amazing to know that because we're partnering in the spirit, that we can change a generation. And so I just want to honor all the partners. If you're a partner, if you don't mind, would you just raise your hand? Thank you guys so much. Wow, you guys are awesome. You know, it's because of you guys and everyone that's online watching all over the world, like Kevin and Kathy said earlier, we're able to go all over the world, preach the gospel, disciple the body. And I don't know if you know this, but a lot of times we've been, you're praying for signs, wonders, and miracles, right? But have you thought maybe that you're the sign, you're the wonder, and you're the miracle? Right? And so for every study guide you've seen go out, for every CD that's been given out this year, for every instrument that has been given away, you partners are making this happen. And so I just wanted to take a moment and honor you guys and th say thank you so much on behalf of Kevin and Kathy and the whole team. You guys are family. We appreciate you so much. And we know that this weekend has transformed this area. There is a deposit, and it's not just in the air. It's in you. Right? And so I want to thank you guys, and let's see what God has for us tonight. Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai.
Okay, we're good. All right, I need all the um, kids to come up here. We're gonna um, have the kids pray over the prayer closet and then anybody that needs healing, we've been seeing so many healings in our meetings because the kids actually come up and pray for the clause and then they hand them out to you. And, and then we teach the kids how to prophesy too and we'll be doing that in homeschooling as well as in the, in the, in the college, um, teaching people how to prophesy. So the kids will actually be delivering words to you actually after the clause. So get ready to receive. And I tell them that the people, the best people to give it to is the back row. So because the back row always gets left out. So all right kids. Now, I know I had about 40 kids this morning yes. want to fly, so how many want to be part of God healing somebody? I know there's more than... Any more kids? Come on up. All right. All right, let's pray over these cause and let's ask Jesus to heal people, okay? You ready? You all ready? Come on. Can you reach? There's a whole bunch over here. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for sending the healer. And I thank you that the healer is in this room. And Jesus, right now, as we would believe that you are transferring the healing power into these claws, just like with Paul the Apostle, even his his clothing and his claws um, brought healing to people. So, Father, we believe right now that the transference, extend your hand, Father, and heal the sick in this room and, and, and wherever they go. In the name of Jesus, we break any bad dreams that people are having. We break any curses that people are encountering in their lives. And we, Lord, we just place this, this into these claws, Father, we believe. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, kid. All right, who needs, who needs um, a touch in their body healing? Um, if you are having bad dreams as well, the Lord has instructed me, if you're having um, demonic activity at night in your dreams, that we, we believe for that too as well to be stopped. So raise your hands. And okay. Everybody raise your hands. Bad dreams or healing. You need healing. All right. I still see hands back there. If you know anybody that needs healing, take one. Take two. Two for one special. <laughs> Raise your hand. Okay, I need all the kids to come back up here when you're done. Okay, thank you for doing that, everybody. Okay, come on up. All right. Now, I've got on the table here, the Lord instructed me, part of the vision of the Warrior Notes is to train up a generation to prophesy. So, as part of that, the Lord instructed me to get rocks made with different words on them. So I have like um, happiness here, success, trust, faith. Um, I have peace, honor, wisdom, blessed, relax, <laughs> believe, courage, joy. Okay, so I teach the kids to prophesy by praying over which rock they're supposed to take and then stand here and pray 
and let the Lord tell them who to give it to. So this is part of learning how to use the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and prophecy. So, all right, you ready? Okay, what, what stone is the Lord telling you to grab? Grab one of the stones and then pray over it. And then ask Jesus to show you who to give it to. And remember the people in the back row. <laughs> they need help too. <laughs> That's your initials? Yes. Cool. Well, well, you can keep that one. Here's another one. You give this one out. You can keep that one. All right, you keep one and you give one. That's a word to yourself. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? And as soon as the Lord speaks to you and shows you who it's supposed to go to, then just hand it to him. Okay? All right, you ready? Pray. Okay, now ask God. Turn around and ask God to show you who you're supposed to give it to. And then come up and get another one. Did I mention go ahead and hand them out? <laughs> Pray. They're praying. They're praying. They're praying. Good job. Good job. Good job. Want to go again? All right, and then come on back up. See ministries work. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna come back up. All right, pray over another one. And prophesy. Go ahead and hand them out. Prophesy. You ready? This guy's focused. Look at that. He already knew. <laughs> All right. Planes and flutes, and then we'll do the. Uh, <laughs> All right, one more round. Come on up. All right. Okay. All right. Now, come on up again. What do you got over there for us, Abby? We got flutes for everybody. Okay, but there's just one rule. You don't play them in the building, okay? You to... Okay, wait till you get home, okay? What else do we have over there? Airplanes. We have airplanes. But there's just one thing with that. You don't fly them in the room. You wait till you get home and you bother your parents. All right, so there's an airplane you can build and fly at home. At home. Did I mention at home? Okay. All right. So you flew an airplane. Now you're going to build one. Okay, has everybody got a fruit and a fruit, a flute and an airplane? You don't play it here, you play it when you get home. Okay. Okay. Now this is this is the other thing. Um, I, w I, am, I was not able to bring a lot of instruments. We got a big airplane, but not big enough. So I, I felt like Santa Claus a little bit. So the airplane, we filled it with as many instruments as we could. All right, but we don't have that many. So what I need is I need parents that 
feel that their child would practice and that you would help them practice by telling them every day to practice. Did I mention practice? Okay, so what I need is parents that would come up here with their child and um, we have a couple of, of different instruments to give out and uh, we'll have more the next time. And um, I have 10 ukuleles. So I want to I want to give those to to children as well. But I need the parents to participate because I need you to help them to actually practice and not put them on eBay and sell them too as well. <laughs> so, so I have. Um, let's start with. Um, where's Caesar at? See, what about the uh, alto saxophone? Do you know anybody alto? A different person than what you mentioned with you? Huh? Is that a different one? Do you have a different one? Yeah. Okay. All right, then I'm just going to pray in tongues and the Lord will tell me who it is. But is there a parent in here? I mean, these are expensive instruments. This is an alto saxophone, brand new. And I need, I need to sew it into a child that will actually practice and one day play with us up here. This is the vision of Warrior Notes and the music ministry is to reproduce uh, in, 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 in all of you, in the children, so that they actually come forth. And we have worship teams everywhere we go to where we have. Uh, my vision that the Lord told me was Saturday nights, the children will be doing the worship. So I'm sewing instruments. We're sewing instruments all over because one day it's gonna, they're all going to come back. Amen. 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 So is it so uh, here? Let's just. The alto is a little smaller. It's usually what it's usually what you start out with, unless you were like me and I went to heaven and I started out with a big one. But I need a parent. I need a parent that the God is speaking to that they know their child will practice. Look at this. This look at this beautiful. Thank you, Lauren. Do you want to talk? <laughs> Can you hold this? Is there someone in here, your child can do this, and next year when we come, they'll be playing with us. Can you, you have a, is there a child like that in here? Is there a parent like that? I believe you, you have a parent like, you have a child like that? Right there, in the back, come on up here. Oh, let's get into this stuff. All right. Okay, so what's the name of your child? Who's the child? Shemuel. 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 Is he here? He was here, but he just left. Oh, he has a business. He runs a coffee shop. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's going to be really surprised. Okay, all right. So, yeah, okay, can you, can you find him? I want to I pray over him. Because he's going to need prayer. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. It comes with your favorite flavor, popsicle inside too. Okay, so we got that. Now we got what's is that a trumpet? Trumpet, yes. All right. I need another parent. I need another parent. Now this puppy's tough. So I need one brave parent with one brave child that'll, that'll practice and then um, come back. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have a harvest. Is there one? She's raising her hand. Okay, come on up here. What's your name? Oh. oh. All right, what's your name? Caleb. Okay, Caleb. Well, here you go, Caleb. I'm going to pray over you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for helping Caleb. Thank you, Lord, for producing fruit that lasts in him. 
Thank you that he will be the most anointed trumpet player. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Caleb. Okay. Okay. All right, here is a, a digital drum um, set pad. It's like a practice pad with multiple pads. So it has all the different drums on it. And it, it'll, it'll, it's a small thing. And it has headsets, parents. <laughs> OK, who in here really feels, how many of the, I know we had a, a just one, right? Are you, are you mom? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Okay, what's your name? What's your name? Conrad. Conrad? Mm -hmm. Okay, Conrad, let me pray for you. And my, Pastor Mike, you pray for him too. Hey, do you have any drumsticks? I sure do. So we have Warrior Notes drumsticks. We're going to give him some drumsticks too. Thank you, Father. For, thank you, Lord, for Conrad. Lord, just anoint him to beat the beat that brings the big demons down from the air. Amen. In Jesus' name. Okay. All right. Now here's another one. This a bear. It's uh, a flute. So who in here is a is being anointed as a parent to help their child? Oh, we got one right here. Oh yes, perfect. What's your name? Eliane. Come up here, Eliane. You can come up here. You can come up here too. All right. Okay, let me pray over you. Father, I thank you for Eliana. I thank you, Lord, you'll anoint her to play the flute, Lord, and to be the one who sees many people healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. All right, and um, just so you know, I just need my tenor sax for one more session tomorrow, and then I'm giving that away, the big one. And I'm also giving this one away tomorrow, but I've already, I already kind of figured out who those all people are. Um, so that'll be tomorrow because um, I, need, I need to play them for the next, and then I'll give them away, okay? All right, so these, the, this one and the, uh, the big tenor sax will go tomorrow. And then, um, Jason, you have an electric guitar that's really, really cool. It, actually, I hope nobody wants it because I'm gonna take it, no. Um, so, you, can you hold that up? Can you just hold it up? I picked this out. I saw this and I picked it out. I said, man, it's a, so is there anybody here? Is that not beautiful? Now you can see why I want to sneak that on the airplane. Just to, Okay, now is there anyone in here that feels like their son or their daughter? Um, and it has headsets. It's got an amp, because it comes with an amplifier and everything. But it has headsets so that they can jam and no, no one will hear them except them. <laughs> So is there anybody in here that feels like their child um, needs, needs to take this? Um, is anybody, does anybody feel that way about this electric guitar? And I was just kidding. I, I have like six of them at home. I don't need any more guitars. That's my number one instrument. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and hand it. Is there anybody here that... What's that? Yes, you can. <laughs> Brother, what's your name? Austin. Austin? Yes. Oh, let me pray. Okay. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord. You just used him in a mighty way. Austin is so anointed to tear it up, Lord, for you. I just thank you, Lord. You anoint him and teach him. He's going to turn out just the way that you breathed him into his mother's womb. In Jesus' name, amen. And here's all your stuff. Okay. Just, you go ahead and put it in. Go ahead and put it in for him right now. Yeah. Okay. Put it in there and zip it up. And then, and then we'll got all this stuff. Okay. Now, I want most of the kids to get a ukulele. We don't have enough for everyone, but is there anybody in here? Anybody in here that um, you feel like your kid, your child could have a ukulele? Just come on up. Just your parents, if your parents. You, you want one? Okay, there's one right there. Let, 
Oh, it's not for you, but you're going to give it to somebody? Can we open one up just so we can show the people? Is there one that's open? That's not a knife. This is a knife. These are little kids' ukuleles, but... Oh, my first thought is to give it away. Okay. You pray huh? about that? She's the one to give it away. So you pray that. about that? Okay. All right, well... It's up to him. And no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. you go ahead. Take two or three. Is there anybody else that wants one or give one to somebody? I, I want to see these things come back. I really, I'm serious. I want to come back here and have like six ukuleles up here playing. Go ahead. Come on up. If you have someone that you can give it to, please do. Okay? All right. What else? Is that it? Oh. Yeah, I'm not giving the airplane away tonight. Sorry. Maybe tomorrow. Um, okay. To the Philippines, I'm, I'm bringing the sound over there. Okay. Awesome. All right. That's good. Okay. Have you found recipients for all of them, all the rifles? Okay. Do you know their names or anything, or can you point them out? Or? Okay. Here's the thing. I don't want to take the Nerf rifles home or the dinosaurs because they're, they have an attitude. So we're going to give away. Um, Caesar has already chosen who the Nerf rifles are going to. So all the, all the ones that he's talked to, come on up. We're gonna give you a Nerf rifle. Look at these things, man. All right. All right, now who wants a dinosaur? Well, I, I want to spread it out. Like, oh, extra bullets. Or is that batteries? All right. The dinosaurs eat too, eat too much, so I don't want them on the plane. Okay, what, is that it? Oh, is that right? We got everything to sp Okay. All right. So we're good? All right. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Woo! Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about the journey that God has put us on, and He's in that journey. But tonight we're going to highlight prophesying from the fire, and that's the name of, of tonight's title. And I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about holy fire, and I want to talk to you about how you can yield to that holy fire in any situation. We've we've been kind of progressing through the development, the maturity of how we handle different situations. We talked about how how we we need we need to understand how to act in any situation not just in the good times we got to be able to operate in in every kind of situation so no matter what happens we know how we are supposed to act how we're supposed to allow the holy spirit to manifest okay so there is holy fire at the altar and if you remember jeremiah was one of those prophets that actually tried to keep quiet because he's getting persecuted. And when he was being persecuted, he got to the place because he was young and he, the Lord told him, just don't look at the faces, keep prophesying. And he, he was, uh, he was trying to get out of it. And so he just, he just decided he's not going to talk anymore. Do you remember all this? And when he, when he did that, what does it say that, what does it say happened? He said that there were fire. It was like fire in his bones. And it, was, it felt like it was going to consume him, right? Right, right. Okay. All right, that is what's happening right now is there is this temptation right now 
there's an onslaught against uh, all of us as ministers and as believers to, to not speak. And there's this feeling, like I've said uh, all weekend, there's this kind of feeling that things aren't working. And that, and that um, for some reason God has left left us, left this nation. You have this feeling that, you know, evil is allowed to reign, you know, that people are mocking God. And um, it's this thing that I intercede for the most. And I remember when I became a Christian and Jesus appeared to me and he, he, he told me, he told me what my destiny was. He told me what my ministry was. I mean, right after I got born again at 19, he told me, explained it all to me. I remember at 10 years old, he called me. He gave me a vision. I was on Mount Sinai. He gave me a vision at 10 years old and told me my whole calling. I didn't get saved till I was 19. That messes theologians up, but Paul said he was appointed as an apostle since birth. And he killed Christians for half his life. And he said he's wrong, no man. <laughs> so put that in your pipe and smoke it, you know. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things that we don't understand. But, but the Lord, at 10 years old, in a Presbyterian church, opened up the heavens to me. And this is what he told me at 10. He said, there are, there are, there are 21 years, three seven-year segments. I was 10 years old. The whole place opened up to me. He said, this is the next three phases. It's seven years, seven years, and seven years. My, my, I could hear my mom. She was the janitor. She was cleaning the bathrooms downstairs. And my dad was a deacon, and he was over in another room working. And the pastor was, was in the parsonage. And I can remember seeing this vision and thinking, I wonder if my parents even have a sense of what's going on with me. Because I, growing up, I would feel an angels come and stand beside me, but I didn't really know what it was. And then this happened, and he said, okay, so it'll be 21 years. By 10 years old, it comes to 31, which is the age I was when I died on the operating table. And then Jesus reset everything and sent me back at 31 and extended out my life again. And he said, here's, here's 12 people, here's 15, 12 to 15 people that I'm sending you to. I met all those people. It took a, a several years to meet them all. When I saw them, I remember them in a lineup that Jesus showed me. I would walk up to them and I would give them the word that the Lord gave me. And they, and most of them weren't even saved. They got saved and immediately. And then when that was all done, The Lord appeared to me again at my job and he said, um, it's time for you to come with me. You finished, your, you finished everything I asked you to do. And I asked him, I said, well, Lord, can I just stay? Can you keep doing this? Can you send me? So he extended out, he extended out my life. He said, I will give you as many people as you want to be sent to. And so that was back right before I retired from Southwest Airlines, he appeared to me. But what he told me was, what he told me was, if you go back and you tell people the truth, he said it will change the way they end up. This is what he told me. He told me that they were, they, if, they, if left alone, people will turn out a certain way. But he said, if you are led by the Spirit and you minister from the fire, if you minister from the Spirit of God yes. and you, you, you speak to people, it will change them, he said, inside. And then it'll, he said, reroute. So they were on a route, but it reroutes them. And they will be routed and they will end up better and in a different way than they were. It, it wasn't God's will for them to end up the way they were going to end up. 
It was just the fact that we have free will. So we can be influenced. But see, the Spirit of God wants to use all of us to influence each other, the body. So you have the fivefold ministry of the church, and they're, they're called, God sets those in a church, Paul said. Paul said God sets in the church the fivefold. It's, it feels like Christmas morning in here, I know. It's just a matter of time before I get hit with a Nerf bullet, you know, and a, an airplane. But the fivefold ministry is anointed and set in the church, according to Paul, is assigned to be toward the body and to build them up so that they reach unity. And, and maturity. So it's unity in the faith and maturity in the faith. And then Paul says, so that then they can do their ministry. So, so if you read Paul, if you want to bring him into it, it's a little different than the way people are presenting it and understand it. Because the fivefold is called to the body. But the body is called to the world. And this is what I was shown, and I, 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 I didn't know, because I, was, I had a different mindset about it. And I've had things happen to me that confirm Scripture, but it was outside the box, because it wasn't the traditional way. So, what, what is lacking today is we are not being built up in the maturity and the unity. So I, I feel the responsibility on my shoulders is to bring people into unity, to find a common place without compromising the message. So I'm not into like, okay, if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, that's okay. You know, it's, it's not okay. okay and, and so I don't compromise the message in order to get people. So, if you want me to turn your mega church into a small Bible study, just invite me. <laughs> because I will make it so that the message is pure and then there's intimacy there. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you that the early church operated in smaller groups and in intimacy and they were being persecuted. So, there are certain times where God has to do certain things because of what's happening. It's not His perfect will, but God's perfect will is the church. But see, I personally know that God wants to bring more emphasis to the body. And they need to come forefront. And the one thing that I got from Brother Hagen and Rama was is that the corporate anointing was the best and the highest form of the anointing. And so when I took that, when I left there, that was my sole goal, was to build the body up into a, until they got into unity and there was a corporate, where every time we got together, no matter what city or country we're in, I'm serious, what's in here right now is not my anointing. It's the Father. It's God. And the corporate anointing, it's the same everywhere we go. When we were in Germany, we were in Berlin. The power of God is the same here as it, is, it was there. When we go to South Africa, Johannesburg, where the ushers carry those Nerf rifles, but they're real ones. All the ushers have machine guns. When you put, go and park your car, I mean, from the time that we pulled up to the gate till the time that I got back on the airplane two weeks later, I was with armed guards the whole time. I never had, I never was left alone, ever. But in the meeting, there were 31,000 people in that church. It was 30, so 31,000, there was 31,000 people and 31 pastors, over, one over each thousand. But when you preach, 
the power of God was so strong because of the corporate. And so what I saw in the last days was people getting healed with no one being touched by anybody but God. I saw people getting spoken to, going into visions. I'm, I'm every time, every, after every service, I'm disappointed if it doesn't happen here. If you don't go into a vision, if you're not on the floor laughing, if God isn't speaking to you, I'm disappointed because that's what I know is supposed to be happening. If I intervene and do too much, then you, you focus on that person. And then you want me to touch you. You want me to give you word. And the Lord has for years now, and I, I'm, I'm allowed now to pray and prophesy over people more, but it's because of the maturity level has gone up. You've got to get to a place where you prophesy from the fire yourself. Now, now what I do, what I do is I, I look in the mirror and I prophesy to myself. But it's not really me prophesying. It's the Spirit of God talking to me. So it's as though I'm being a, I'm, I'm being a minister to. You got to become another person. You got to like walk away from your old life and be, become another person. Like Saul did. He walked away from Samuel and God changed his heart. It changed him. He just got into pride, and at the end of his life, he lost everything. You have to not identify with this life. In order to, to prophesy and walk in the fire, you have to actually leave your current life. I didn't say your current wife, I said your current life. <laughs> You, you, you literally, you, like right now, like right now, the way I feel, I do not identify with my life on this earth at all. I don't, I don't actually even feel the, I, when I minister, I don't even feel the ground. Like right now, I don't feel anything except the power of God. I don't, I, I mean, I would have to look at myself, look at my ID to know who I am. I don't identify as Kevin. I feel as though God has taken me over. But this is for everybody. It's not because I'm a five-fold minister. Come on. Of course, I'm five-fold ministering to you. But God wants us all to come up to that same level. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit are for everybody, not just the five-fold. Right? Amen. So you can't just push it on the five-fold, is what I'm saying. You have to let them speak, but then you have to receive it, and then you have to mature. But where I come from, where I was, the body is supreme. The, bo the body of Christ is supreme down here on the earth. And Jesus is ahead. We're all one. The Spirit of God is the only one that can do this. So we have to have our doctrine lined up. We have to know what we believe. And we have to stay with it, right? But it can't just be doctrine, because then you'll just be a Pharisee. So the thing, and I'm writing a book right now, but I'm not going to tell you the name because everybody will steal it. But I'm actually, I mean, I don't, I have my own publishing company and we're doing fine. But I might publish this with a publisher because I feel like it's a message that my father, my father, Brother Hagen, would want me to write. And it talks about what, he, what he, the Spirit told him, and he told us in class, he said, we can't just be known as a people of the Word. He said, he said a whole move of God is about to be aborted. And he saw a dry river, a river that dried up, and it was the movement that he was a part of. He said, if we don't become people of the Spirit as well as people of the Word, he said, we're going to miss a whole move of God. That's what he told. He said it several times. I checked it out. I mean, I, I called. I mean, I had, I had someone call me who did all his books and was right there with him. And her name is Billy Brim. And she confirmed all this because I asked her. I said, this is what's going on with me. I feel like I'm carrying this to the next generation like a torch. I feel like I got it, and I have to run with this. 
I have to allow the spirit to also move and not just be emphasizing the word just all the time, the word, the word, the word. Because, because it gets to the place where it becomes a system. And I don't have to push God's buttons. He's pushing mine. But I'm not pushing his. No, I'm serious. When I met Jesus, he was everything that the word of God said he was, but he was nothing like what people told me. But this is what, what I realized. I kept hearing this thing, you got to work the word, you got to work the word, you know. And as I was standing before him, I realized that he was working me. I was not working him. That he is a person. So, with all your learning, get understanding and get the fire. You got to be lit up. So when you speak, you got to speak from the fire. So this is how I, I'm going to teach you tonight. Is, is when you walk in the spirit, you're walking, you're walking in the spirit, you're walking in the fire. But the way to contact your spirit is through praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Okay, when you pray in tongues, you start to accumulate inside of you like a battery. You accumulate and you must discharge that. So you, you accumulate, you pray in the spirit, I, I go over the Word of God, I listen to the Word of God, I pray in the Spirit hours and hours just to preach to you a couple hours. So I fast and pray for, for weeks before I speak. And then when I get here, I eat. But I'm praying and I'm, I'm up all night. And when I come down here, I hook up to the same place from where I pray in tongues, but I speak in English. I don't know how, if you got on but this is how you walk in a fire. You, you hook up with your spirit. You, you stay out of here. You hook up with your spirit. You pray in tongues. And then you say something in English. And you identify. You see if what you're saying is, is linked up with your spirit. And that's how you learn to prophesy. You learn to prophesy from your spirit. You learn to interpret what the spirit is saying. But you pray in tongues a lot. And then all of a sudden, you'll start to have understanding. You pray for understanding. Not just knowledge. You get understanding. And what the Spirit of the Lord wants is, what the Spirit of the Lord wants is a, a transformation. The Spirit wants change. He wants to change you. But in order to change you, He's got to convince you that you've got to get out of the box. You've got to get out of your limitations. Yes. Yes. So you have to actually... You have to actually allow the Spirit to take you in the mindset of being in the Spirit, which is not being in the flesh, which is not being in your own understanding, which may be that you hear God loudly and it's silent because God speaks in the silence too. But that's my message coming up soon. You have to switch over. Now, now when we leave on Monday morning, when I will be up early reviewing the flight plan and everything about the airplane, all the, the everything, the weights, the fuel, everything. And then I'll be calling the pilots. And when I come down to the car to go to the airport, I will be a different person because now I gotta fly a hundred thousand pound airplane for the next six and a half hours. And so my mindset, I'm no longer Kevin that went to heaven. <laughs> I'm still Kevin that went to heaven, but I'm not, I, I got to switch over. And now I, I have the responsibility of operating something. And then, then when we get to Phoenix, then we unload and then I fly to Orange County and I turn the airplane back over and then our airplane is sitting there waiting for us. Then I fly that back, and that's a whole nother airplane. And then we're gonna speak again that night. Then the next morning, I'm taking my staff on our airplane, I've gotta take them home, I've gotta take them to Tampa and, and you know, wherever else. Then 
our, our other airplane is being painted right now in Battle Creek, Michigan. So then I gotta go and pick that up. Okay, but what I'm saying is, is that you can do the dishes and you can do your job, you can do these things, but if you really want to cross over, you gotta become that person that walks in the spirit, which means it might, you might not be so chatty, you might not be, you know, you, you, you kind of switch. When you go to your job, you, you know, you got to put on your game face or whatever, and you do the, you do, you're a professional, you have to do something, you have, but then you can relax in other situations. But see, when you're in the spirit all the time, your mind doesn't like that. Because your mind doesn't participate in these things. So you have to, you have to watch VeggieTales, you have to do something that's, that causes your mind. So I watch, I watch things like after this, I'll have to go and I will watch a video on, on an airplane that I'm gonna be tested on I'm, in two weeks. I watch a, videos to, to learn all the techniques and everything that I gotta go through. Even though I've flown it for, for like almost 20 hours. I go over all that because the FAA is gonna test me. They're gonna fly with me and I'm gonna have to go through all these maneuvers all these aerobatic maneuvers, loops and rolls and things like that. Okay, well, what I do is I go and I disengage from the spirit. And, my, and Kathy knows this. I just sit and I watch something. And I go ahead and I bring myself back. Because my mind can't just be that way all the time in the spirit. Because it, it doesn't do anything. It, it sits there like a, a really mad child. <laughs> because it's, okay, so you have to learn how to balance this. Okay, so you go and you do something, and you disengage, and you reset. Then you learn how to walk in the Spirit, where you can manage it and you can handle it. So, you know, the power of God is so strong all the time. When I'm flying, I feel the power of God stronger than here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a different type of thing. But, I, you know, I don't fall over and say, you got the airplane, you know, because I'm, I'm shaking or, you know, I start prophesying. You know, I'm not jerking, you know. I'm not, I'm not like, you know. In other words, I can walk in the Spirit, be in the Spirit. But it doesn't like, it's not, you know, if you notice, I mean, I can hardly walk, right? I mean, I can hardly walk almost all the time because the power of God is so strong all the time. It doesn't matter whether I had a shower or had candy or it doesn't matter. It's just it's so strong all the time. But you don't see me like laying out there, oh, that's Kevin, you know, he's just got hit by the Lord. You know, I, it's, I, I can still function. Jesus was the same way. He could function. But you have to understand that if you're going to minister by the power and the anointing in the fivefold, you have to be able to disengage because your mind has to be able to do, be able to grasp something. And your body has to be ministered to as well. So I minister to my body. Uh, most of my, my income, my pay, is, is used for uh, health things like, like fresh juice and vitamins and all kinds of things. And, and, and I just, uh, I mean, I, I, ha I could have a vitamin store open in my house. <laughs> I mean, Walgreens calls me and says, hey, do you have any vitamin C? You know, <laughs> can you ship it to us? So, no, I spend most of my income on uh, causing my life to be live out longer. And, and, and it, it's, it's kind of expensive. But I do that because I got to minister to my body too as well. But I, I let it be on my terms. Same with my mind. If I'm going to watch something, it's going to be something that is going to improve me in something. So I, I go over, I have several aircraft that I have to get ratings in yet. Because we're filming the kids shows with all these different jets. So I go through these different military jets and, and different uh, astronaut training. And so the kids programs are, we have enough material just for about 10 years. So that's just the ventures of Captain Kevin. So I'm just doing this for the children. Because I'm retired, I don't need to do this. I'm a, I'm a captain, I don't need to, to prove anything. But the Lord is wanting me to show these kids that if Captain Kevin can do it from starting with nothing, just a couple years ago, then they can do it. Right? Okay, so it's the same thing with you walking in the Spirit. I feel like, I feel like the one thing that I realized in heaven was is that nobody up there would want to keep a corner on the market as far as their walk with God. In other words, up there, everyone wants you to succeed them. 
it wasn't like Enoch is like, I hope nobody like disappears like I did because I want to be the only one. And Elijah, you know, you know, he's like hoping that God doesn't send a fiery chariot because that he knows, oh, there's somebody else now that's going to get picked. There's no competition at all. It's, that's only down here with ministries. <laughs> but it's not in heaven. And, and all those ministers that made it to heaven, they, they, they don't want people down here to think that they were special. Everybody up there that did anything for God was a servant. And they just served God and they served people. And, and you'll find that. Like Paul will come up and talk to you. You won't know he's Paul. People will come up to you. They, they'll want to help you. I was going to say help you with your luggage, but you don't get to take your luggage to heaven. So... <laughs> But they, they, you, they're, they're servant. Everybody's a servant. Okay, so, so the thing that I saw, and, and I thought, man, if I go back, I want to tell everybody, is that Jesus hung on the cross for all of us to walk like Enoch did. And prophesy like Elijah did. So it shouldn't just be a reliance on the fivefold. Because one of the gifts of the Spirit is prophecy. And that it says is, is issued out by the Spirit severally as the Spirit wills. It says the Spirit wills, He portions out gifts. And there's nine of them, plus um, the one that's the major one, I mean it's the most important one, but nobody knows about it. It's called the, the, the gift of helps. It's mentioned in the Bible. It's actually the, 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 the big boy, but, but it, you know, it's not spectacular. So you won't get on TV, you won't get a book deal if you're in the helps ministry. But that's the big boy. That's the, that's the one you, that you will have the best rewards. These people do stuff and they don't care if they're noticed or not. And they, they, they let God prosper them and they help your ministry. They'll do anything for you. These are the people that are the most dependable. The prophets won't answer their phone, you know, when you call. But these people will be there. They'll change your tire. They'll do whatever. That these are servants. This is a gift. It's a gift of helps. It's in the it's in the Bible. Okay. So after you learn and you start to walk in your giftings, then what will happen is is the Spirit will want to take you to a different level than what you have seen all the time. I'm surprised if people don't have visions and dreams. I'm surprised. If people don't have the joy where they can't even talk, I'm surprised when it doesn't happen because the Spirit wants to manifest all of the fruit. He wants to manifest all the gifts. He wants people to walk in a higher level. So there's some things that happen to some people because God has to keep the temperature in every de generation at a certain point. So what you have is you have a, a group of people in every generation that have heard the Word of God and have not responded to it. And so the temperature of the church as a whole starts to drop. So what you'll have is you'll have people that pop up and become popular because God has to keep the torch burning. So every generation has these people that pop up that are used mightily but it is a default to keep the temperature up, hoping that the whole body does come forth and then it will usher in Jesus because the harvest will come. So this is what happens. I'm just telling you because no one, no one seems to be saying these things. But you, these people, they get, le the, the Lord told me, they, he, he leans on them. So what he does is he, he comes and he literally physically gets close to them and he leans into them constantly in the spirit. And then angels come and they're always standing at the foot of your bed. Um, you're always having dreams and, and um, you're always feeling the fire come on you, but it's not inside you, but it's on you. And then you're, you need somebody like somebody crazy like me to come and say, listen, you didn't need to yield to that because you're being leaned on in the spirit. That's what Jesus told me. You're being leaned on. Okay, so this is what will happen. If, if you're about to meet the right one and get married, the wrong one will come. 
immediately, and this is why, is because you start to get angel visitation and something starts to happen with your spirit because God is preparing you for the next stage of your life. Mm -hmm. And you light up and, and the demons actually see angels coming back and forth from heaven and standing with you. They know that something's about to happen. So if you're going to be promoted in the spirit, if you're going to be something that big is going to happen in your life, you'll, you'll, you'll sense a lot of angel activity and the demons know this. And so they preemptively will hit you. And not try to knock you out of what God's about to do. And so I've seen this happen where the Lord had chosen certain people and, and they, they were supposed to be in my life. And someone came and deceived them and snatched them away. And it's still that case today. And they're totally out of the will of God. But I'm not doing a thing about it. So you got to be ready. Now, all of you, every last one of you that's in this room, this is exactly what's happening to you right now. Every one of you in this room. You have angels visiting you, and they are sent to walk you into the next step. But it involves fire. Okay, so what they do is they set it up so that you're under someone that preaches the Word and teaches you and encourages you to study yourself. Once you have developed your own study habits and you, you are faithful, then the Spirit of God will come in a stronger way because He can trust you. Okay, now this is what has never really happened, is the moves of God have diminished after they come, and false doctrine comes forth, witchcraft, witches move in to moves and abort them. And I can tell you stuff that you don't want to know. But I've seen this in all the moves, is that witches come in. They came in on Azusa Street and stopped that. So God has to fortify you with His Word to where you are immovable in the Word of God. But then the next thing that has to happen is God has to move by His Spirit on you. And when the Spirit moves, I'm telling you, the po power of God is so strong that you start to think that you're right about something when you're wrong because of the power of God. If you don't have that foundation in you of the Word of God, the Spirit has no tools to tell you you're off. I've had this happen. I have, I've done albums where there was, there was a wrong note. It wasn't wrong to your ear. But it was not what the Spirit wanted. And I liked it. So what I did is I just did a kind of like a resolve and an ending. And the Lord said, no. You were, not you, you were told not to do that. You were told not to, to resolve it there. You were supposed to leave it hanging because you were going into a different movement in the next part of your album. And so I had to take it out. See, I try to fix it in the flesh, in my mind, which would just be math. And the Spirit was saying, no, that is not, that is not what I intended. Because the effect of that playing in people's homes is supposed to bring this. It's not supposed to resolve. The notes are not supposed to resolve. They're supposed to hang so that it can transfer to the next movement. Because you want to have re resolution when you're doing movements in music. But if you leave it hanging, it's called a sustain, a suspension. And the Lord wants that because He does, in your spirit, He's, he's ministering to you. And He wants to move your heart into a resolve. But it's, music is like a language. So the spirit's the same way. You might feel like you're suspended, like it's not resolving, like there's stuff that's not resolving. That is part of your character forming that he's doing. Is that you, you have to allow the Lord to interpret what's going on, even with people. Now, I've had so many times where the Lord has told me something. As soon as I leave my room, I have four people that are very powerful and above me say the opposite. Mm. And it got to be so prevalent that I had to start stepping back. 
because I started to see that what God was saying to me and telling me to do, I started to see that the way it was set up is that it was going to become a limitation to me because I needed to go outside of what was the established way to do it. And so in order to not cause a problem, I just very gingerly moved into this and just continued with my life. But what happens is, is you find that God has to bring you new friends. He has to bring you new people into your life because you have progressed in your walk with God and you have to do what He's called you to do. Well, what if you're the one that is supposed to go to the wall and set the temperature? What if you're the one that God is going to use for this generation to set the body of Christ's temperature to hot when it's lukewarm? And no one wants to touch that thermostat and they put fear into you. And what happens is even the fivefold starts to think that they have authority and they say stuff in a generation. This, I mean, what do you think the fivefold was doing while John was on the Isle of Patmos? And you got churches that are lukewarm. And God, Jesus said, I got to write, have you write letters to them for me. Well, why couldn't, why couldn't he just tell the pastors himself? Because they weren't listening. So he had to have John write letters to them. Okay, so what was happening in these different times where the church grew cold and there was fivefold ministry? And the church grew cold under their watch. Okay, so you can say, and this is what has happened, is they blame it on the sheep. So I got blamed. I was a sheep. It was, it was blamed, and I was called a stupid sheep. And I thought, well, you're a sheep too. I mean, like, I mean, isn't an apostle a sheep, you know? And I'm saying, like, what's going on here? And so I noticed this. I'm only saying this because no one else will talk about it, because there's a Christian cartel, you know? <laughs> And so I'm telling you this because this happens, this happens when, when we become lukewarm. You know, it's supposed to be protect and serve. You know, it used to be on police cars. Protect and serve. Some places it still is. But that's what the government was. It was supposed to be protecting us and serving us. That's why we got government. We paid them to protect and serve us. So why are we serving them? Do, okay, that's that thing that goes on with how Satan gets in and makes it a dictatorship to where they tell you what you see, they tell you what you believe, and they tell you what to do. So they, they, they push and they say, well, it's my body, my choice. But then when they want to stick you with a needle, it's no longer my body, my choice. Okay, do you get it? Do you get it? Okay, this is what I'm talking about is this generation is facing all this because it has become lukewarm. Yes. If it was hot, it would be discernible. Yes. And a lot of things would be prevented. They would never dare raise their head. So there, there, is, a, there is that side in the, in the darkness and, and behind the scenes that is diabolical and very powerful. The only way to overthrow is through the corporate, through the body of Christ. So I was told, I was told that we are to trample on serpents and scorpions. And we have power over the, the enemy. But if you notice, serpents and scorpions are earthbound. And so, I'll just tell you what I know, is that there are entities that I've seen and met that only the church can take out. Then that goes over well, you know. But there are certain individuals that are really, really not wise to go after things without a group or the body going after it. So there are certain entities that are very high up that we are supposed to be doing that warfare corporately. But individually, we, have, we can trample on serpents and scorpions. Why did he say that? Well, he's quoting Psalms 91. Jesus is quoting Psalms 91 when he told the disciples that. Jesus was still writing the New Testament. He was quoting the Old. So was Paul. So get over it. The Old Testament is part of the New Testament because 
they were writing the New Testament and they were quoting the Old Testament all the time. He, they, he was just filling in all the gaps, the fulfillment through Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm saying all this because if you don't walk in the fire, the devil has nothing to fear. If we all walk in the fire, he has a lot to fear. If we all agree as touching anything, it shall be done. I'm only saying all this, and it's making me a lot of friends not, <laughs> is that what happens is, is that in every generation, we push the power and the responsibility onto certain individuals instead of doing it ourselves yes. as individual believers. And, and you can check this out. The, we were always supposed to walk in our authority that Jesus gave us in our giftings. We are always to operate in the Spirit. We are always to hear. We are to judge everything. A spiritual person makes judgments about all things. That's why Paul said, if someone's going to prophesy, the whole body will sit there and judge it. And so, it ends up not, nobody wants to, to take advantage of karaoke night in church. Because what happens is, is that you're responsible to the whole body. And so if they yell, sit down, you have no anointing on you, which is what they did at Azusa Street. If you weren't anointed, they told you to shut up and sit down. So if we all had accountability, then the Spirit would be able to use us and, and God could. So, so when did Paul, does anybody know who the pastor of Corinth was? Because he never addressed them. But they, they were having way, way like crazy meetings. Well, where, where does he mention the pastor? Who was the pastor at Ephesus? Who was, I mean, we know James was a pastor in Jerusalem. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying there wasn't a pastor, but I'm saying that he was addressing the congregation. That Paul was. Paul was. And all those letters were written to the Christians, the body. And he didn't tell the pastor to hand over that one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. He told the people when they're get there together, turn that one over to Satan. He didn't tell the pastor to do it. I'm just saying, you know, I, and I don't, I'm, just, I'm just bringing it up because I want to show you that I think that we put so much emphasis on certain leaders that we put pressure on them to feed us and to, to hear from God for us. So, you know, you, 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 I joke because I say, you know, you want a word, I got one for you, repent. <laughs> well, see, I got that from Lester Summerall. Because Lester Summerall, they, they would always like ding him up for, can you speak to the ministers? Can you speak to the pastors? Can you... Um, you know, so every church, you know, they say, hey, I got a bunch of uh, ministers here that are being in training. And um, so he, he, he said, no, I got to go. You know, I got another appointment. And so this one pastor told me, he said, well, I, I finally talked him into on the way out, just I'll have them all sitting in the office as you're like getting dressed, you're know, taking your coat and everything, getting ready to go to your car. He said, can you just say something to them? <clears throat> And so he would even back in. He would never pull into a parking spot. He always backed in. He never wanted to go backwards ever. That was against his belief. So he would always go forward. So he would have somebody back the car in so he could just pull out. Because he never wanted to back up. Because he didn't believe in doing anything, going back. Okay, so on the way out, this pastor said that he walked in and got his coat on. And they were going to take him to his car. And all these like young ministers were there. They were part of the, you know, some sort of school or something. And this is what Lester said to him. He said, so I hear you all want to be in the ministry. They said, yeah. He goes, well, I got a word for you. Repent. <laughs> and he walked to his car. That's where I got that. Because that's the way he was. So in this time that we just went through, were we ready for what we went through? 
Because I feel as though we were ministered to in our soul and we called it spirit. Because I didn't see the response in the spirit. So what, I, what immediately, I knew, some, I knew that this was going to happen. I told my staff, I told my wife, they, I knew that something was wrong. I, and I would tell people, I said, I see a destruction coming. And I see that, yes, God wants certain people in office and he wants all this, but I, I see something else happening where it's not going to happen. I see two things. I see what God wants and I see what's going to happen. So I told Ryan, I said, listen, I'll tell you, you know, because he asked me and I said, I said, the, the nation is not one and they're not repenting. And I said, so we're going into the desert. And I said, I actually saw, uh, I'll tell you what I, I saw, Ryan. I said, this is what I'm seeing all over the United States. This is three years ago. I said, I saw in Atlanta, I saw in the center of cities where they had to coordinate off and they had military in the cities. I saw a police car, an Atlanta police car upside down burning. I said, that's what I see coming. I see chaos. I see all kinds of problems, riots, destruction, looting. And so he sent me, one day, he sent me a picture of, of, of a car, an, a police car in Atlanta, Atlanta police car, upside down burning. And he said, is this what you saw? And it was exactly what I saw. And it happened. And then he, he told me, he said, my, you know, when we were in Michigan, we were in Michigan, and he told me to teach on healing. That was the last conference we had. I taught on healing and COVID broke out the next month. Mm. And the Lord, I had to go just to my studio with nobody. I had nobody. So it was just me in a studio and I would film. I filmed for a year. I filmed every weekend. I did a spirit school by myself. I did, I did a three day seminar every weekend by myself. And I preached by the power and the fire of God. And I did spirit schools just like this, but I did them with nobody by myself. And I preached as though nothing was wrong. I preached about the covenant. I pre preached on healing. I preached on, on prophecy and God's will and God's voice. And I told the devil, I said, just keep it up because I'm just going to keep going until you stop. And, then, and all of a sudden we started to get calls from convention centers in cities that said, we'll take you. So we started getting convention centers and we had a lot of people. And they would just let us meet. They said, just wear your mask in, and then you can put the seats back together. And that's what we would do. And we did that. And it just kept opening up and opening up. Okay, this is the way you should act. I, I felt, and I'm not just highlighting myself. What I'm saying is, where were all my friends that were healing evangelists? Because we needed them during COVID. I mean, I mean Jesus is not afraid of that disease. And, and I would pray for people. And, and that you could tell they were sick. I never got it. I've never gotten that disease, ever. But I was hugging people. I, I let people kiss me. I prayed for people. I thought if Jesus can pray for lepers and not get leprosy, then I can pray for, you know what I mean? Okay, but don't, Jesus called me Kevin. He didn't call me an apostle or a prophet. When he met me, he just called me Kevin. And so I did this as Kevin. And then I, that's when this all happened with me, is I realized, you know, we're all called to walk in the fire. Yes. We're all called to fulfill God's desire and vision for our lives yeah. and for others. Okay, so the whole thing about Warrior Notes is that, is that he gave me a vision about the end times when I got saved, that, that just days after I got saved. And it was the end times. I know exactly how it's going to happen with the United States. And so all this pantry, all, everything we're doing with the school and, uh, and everything is because I know how it's going to go eventually. But we've been able to hold it back. So my efforts, like doing this this weekend and every weekend, is that I can delay what I saw happening. And, and I was shown this in 1980. And the things I saw in that, in, in that vision, there's no way for me to know, because I didn't know the Bible. But what I saw was I was, in my, I was in my backyard. I just got saved. So I was living in the house with my parents, and I was, I was 19 years old, and I was getting ready to go to college. And I had a vision of my backyard, and this hole opened up in my backyard, and this 
creature came out. It looked like a cat, but it didn't have any skin. It just had skin. His name was Abaddon. So I, I found out later that that's in the Bible. Okay, he, was, he came out of the hole and he had great authority over the weather. And he could create war. And so he came out and he stood there and stared at me in defiance. His name was Abaddon. And he just, as a, as a, just to mock me, he went like this and he made the skies go dark. And the weather, he, he could control the weather. And then the Lord lifted me up and took me and the, the, these Russian airplanes had come through Canada and were now over the United States. And they, were, they had red stars on their tails and they had counter rotating props which I never heard of, but I looked it up and it was the Bear 95 that is the Russian bomber. And then I was taken to different cities where they had been bombed and the Lord showed me that I was going to create this network all over the world and that I was going from one city to another and, and, and I was hiding food and water and blankets and I was having them meet, I was giving them the lessons that they needed so they could study the Bible together and pray. And I was kept hopping from one city to another, giving food and water, and they knew where we were to meet. And I had created this whole thing that that was the vision of Warrior Notes. And then, and then um, he showed me to create worship teams all over the world to train people how to worship prophetically and then start worshiping to where they were worshiping all the time and they had handoffs. So it was like a prayer meeting, but it was, it was worship. So the next group would come in and take over and they would have the 12 to 3 session and then it just went all the time and it disrupted the devil. And I feel like because of, of God's grace that all this stuff has been delayed. But until I saw what happened recently, when I realized that Satan was trying to push the timeline. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why I'm saying to you, why is it that people back off when they're really needed? I mean, the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing and gifts of miracles, they should, they should work just as much during what we just went through. Yes. Right? right? So, you know, for, for $2,000, $2,600, you, you can have Amazon um, send you a camera. And it, it's really not that hard to set up a little studio and broadcast. And just speak from the fire for about 30 minutes. Just like pick a couple of scriptures, turn it on, speak from the fire, and just prophesy until you can't even see straight. And then just turn it off. And, and start your own channel. And, and just have 30 minutes of beating the living daylights out of the devil. Just start to speak into the heavenly. You start to speak. Just yeah. prophesy to people and like build the body up. Okay. And if everybody would do these kind of things, and if you would like get together a couple at a time, and just get together and, and start prophesying to each other. Just say, the Lord's just saying this, and then the Lord's saying this. Let's pray. Let's agree that the Lord's saying this. So that's why I'm formed. What I'm, everything that we're doing here is God, God called me to do this, but Warrior Notes is permanent. But it's not individual ministries anymore. It's just one big body called Warrior Notes where people just are on the same page together. And they, 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 they don't promote each other. They don't promote themselves. They, don't, they promote God, but it's Warrior Notes. And the reason why is then it will always be. Somebody can't come in and hijack it. Is it, it's, it's what God is doing. You don't, you don't have to, you can be part of this and be educated and, and sent forth and do work and it's already done for you. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an umbral. But in these last days, we're all going to be walking in the fire, which means that you're going to be so caught up that you're going to have to know the Word of God so strongly that you cannot be deceived. Yeah. You cannot be misled. And you can be able to discern when the devil has moved in mm. and is trying to hijack the move. Yeah. So what has happened in this room is that you've gotten over yourself. So at this point, there's no turning back. Everything about you 
is different because you were never meant to be how people treated you, Amen. ever. When I found out that I was royalty, when I found out how Jesus treated me, I knew I couldn't go to churches because he was treating me as a co-heir, which is actually in the Bible, did you know that? Yeah. So I'm a co-heir. So when he talked to me, he didn't talk down to me. He talked across to me. He talked to me, and this is what he said. He said, you're going to rule and reign with me forever Amen. in eternity. That's what he said. He said, you go tell everyone, so I'm telling you. He told me that you are down here qualifying for your position in eternity. So everything you go through down here, it doesn't matter when you pass away. It doesn't matter how you pass away. In fact, I didn't know how I passed away because you're not told. I felt no pain. I couldn't get back into my body. I didn't know why I couldn't get back in my body. I didn't know why the doctor wasn't doing CPR, but they didn't have me hooked up to a monitor. They were doing a dental surgery. So they didn't even know. Now they do that because they've lost so many people. But I didn't know how I passed away. Jesus told me that I had died. I didn't know that I had died. There was no difference. Wow. It, it's, it, it's like nothing. And you know, like I just broke the sound barrier and I was like down there at NASA and I went through all this school and learned how to fly the airplane, then learned how to eject. Cause you got, that's like the big deal. The big deal is more, more than flying the airplane is getting out of it if something happens. So after all of that, I, I did all these maneuvers and they, they let me fly and then they let me go the speed of sound. And, I'm watching the speed, and we went to where we were over the 700 miles an hour at sea level. We were actually up at 29,000, so it's a little higher. So it's about 1,000 miles an hour. And I'm waiting for this you know, big bang and this big, you know. And it went, bing. I'm like, wait a minute. That's it? He goes, yeah, we just broke the sound barrier. And um, we went up to 1.6 Mach, which was 1,128 miles an hour is what we went. And then we were, we're, we were going, we had traveled 55 miles in those couple of seconds and I had to start my turn. And so we didn't go any faster because we had to turn back toward the land again because we were out in this area that only NASA owns. And they gave us permission to do this once. So we just climbed straight up and then flipped over and then did my run. And then we just went back and did pattern work to, to learn how to land it and all that. But it was like, okay, so that's it. I had built this thing up as being, okay, we're gonna like have this big rooster tail thing come out the back, you know, when we break the sound barrier and it's gonna be this big boom. But they heard it down there, the ships heard it and felt it, but we didn't feel nothing. And I, I was told that the second time, you know, the Mach 2, when you, when you go to this two, twice the speed of sound, it's even less of a, of a bump. Okay, when I was started walking in the spirit, where I started having these things happen to me, like right now, I'm like, I don't know if you can feel it, but I'm like freaking out right now. Do you feel like what I feel? It's like, I thought it was going to be this like sensational thing. You know, like it's like, you know, some kind of spectacular thing. But like what I'm feeling right now is beyond me. I mean, I can't, I can't even stand it. But there, it's not spectacular. And, it, and I'm talking to you normally. But every time I move towards somebody, they start to feel it. That's what I'm walking in. But I'll walk in that to the car. I'll walk that to my room. And I'll sit there and stare at Kathy for like 20 minutes and not be able to talk. But I could talk now. But as soon as I get out of that, it's still on me. But I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm having to readjust and come back. It's like I've, I have to go through this process for like 20, 30 minutes. So I have to do something mentally to kind of click me over. Okay, but it wasn't something, it's not something spectacular. So like I could, I could lay hands on every one of you right now and the power of God would, I don't even know if you can handle it because I can't handle it. Okay, but if I do that, what you'll have happen is you'll encounter what I'm encountering. But can you walk in this permanently? Okay, so these guys, they, they fly this airplane all the time. It's an F-104, and it's for astronaut training. So we went up and did the space shuttle approach. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to see what it was like to come in from space and do the approach. Okay, and now we filmed it. But these guys do it all the time. To me, man, I'm like, 
oh my God, you know, like all this stuff to remember. And I'm like, oh. It's just overwhelming. But to them, they do it all the time. And it was just, you know, that's no big deal to them. And so after our, like five or six approaches, it became more familiar to me. And then I, I was doing good. And then we landed. Okay, with walking in the Spirit, it seems like it's overwhelming until He gets a hold of your will. And somehow it's not about you anymore. It's about Him completely. And, and it, something happens inside of you where you know you can't lose. You can't lose. You think you're losing things, but you're not losing anything. Where everything is worth it to do whatever you can for Him and to be a part of what God is doing on the earth. You want to be part of what God's doing on the earth. And I have been told... I have been told by Jesus himself, it has been confirmed through the most accurate prophets that I know. They have called me and repeated what Jesus, in fact, they just did it two days ago. Called me. And reiterated everything. Something that I will never say to anyone. But what God is doing here, I'm just telling you, what God is doing here at Warrior Notes, the most accurate prophet is part of, of this movement. Is 100% in support of what's happening because he prophesied it when it was nothing. Amen. So what he's doing is he's anointing all of us to walk in this in the last Amen. days. So what you're going to see is you're going to see that there was overemphasis on certain things and you're seeing a readjustment now and there's some crybabies. You're going to see it go toward the body now. And then you're going to see the fivefold rise up and start fulfilling their call because they're realizing that it was always about the body. It was always about all of us together in unity. So if you walk in the fire and you prophesy from the fire, there is no way that this junk and these resistance and all these things that you're going through is going to stay. It cannot. But you have to speak. You have to hook up and you have to speak. So all of you got to do this. Even, even like Bobby, who takes care of our buildings, he comes into the building, he announces to the rats, he goes, Somebody's leaving and it's not going to be me. And he went to war. He was at Home Depot every day and Ace Hardware. What's, what's new? What do you got? He, he said, he would call me, he goes, Brother Kevin, he goes, I just want you to know, we're winning. <laughs> He's watching right now. When, when we had all the, ca the cameras installed and we started seeing all the demons who were in that building when we first got it, he was there. I watched him on video. I told him, I said, we got some, we got some really mean devils we need to get rid of. He goes, no problem. He calls all his relatives. So on the cameras, he, he's got all his relatives. They're all Spanish. They're all praying going through the building with oil, like little bottles of oil, and they're, they're, they're anointing every door and casting out the devil. And they all left. They all left. And he's just like, he's just, a, he's just, you know, he's a contractor. I'm saying that because I didn't call the prophet. I didn't call the apostle. I called Bobby. <laughs> And Bobby says, somebody's leaving and it's not going to be me. Yeah. And so he's that way with demons. He's that way with rats. He's, he's that way. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay, so everybody needs a Bobby. Yeah. And he can swing a hammer and he can use the name of Jesus too. Yeah. Okay, so this is the way it's going to be from now on. Is all of you are going to rise up and be the church. Yeah. And you're going to be the answer 
And you're going to learn to prophesy. You're going to learn to receive words of wisdom and words of knowledge and tell people and talk to people. <laughs> what time is it anyway? What day is it? Wow. Huh? What time? Eight what? Fifty. Fifty. Yeah, so that's like 3.30 in my house. <laughs> no, not that bad. Man, I just heard Jesus yell. He says, tell them about my love for them. Aww. He just yelled it, I mean loud from heaven. I mean, I heard him. He said, tell them about my love for them. So, so he loves you. <laughs> he, he, he cares about us. But he needs us to increase the intensity in the spirit. So I've given you tools so that you can move into your promotion in the fire. Amen. I told you how you can disengage, how you can minister, but you got to understand your mind, you got to understand your body, and you got to understand your finances. You got to speak to your finances. Amen. Yeah. You got to. I mean, I, I, I'm going to release this because I, I, I'm getting to the place where I don't even care what people think. Amen. But. I saw that all money was earmarked for the kingdom. I actually saw that all the like little serial numbers, that, that God had assignments for, for all the denominations of money. And that it was all to be used for the kingdom. And I saw that it was in the wrong hands. And I saw, that's why I, I say, you know, I made, uh, uh, you know, I made some, uh, some waves bigger than you see here. Because I'm saying that, listen, prosperity has more to do with authority than it does giving. But see, giving is part of that authority because you're, you're, you're sowing and you're reaping. But what I saw was the covenant and the authority that we have as a believer is, is that, is I'm just saying, I command these things to come to me because they're in the wrong hands. And I feel like a lot of things are supposed to come to you and they're not because the devil has built like little blockades yeah. and that you need to just address these things from the fire about your finances. Yes. But what he's going to do is, is the Lord will tell you as you prophesying about your finances, he's going to give you a business idea. He's going to give you an invention. He's going to give you a, a, a subject to write on or to, to do something with to meet a need in the, in the, in the, in the people's lives. And he's going to create a business and he's going to meet the needs because he's giving you a way. He's giving you the power to create wealth, as the, as the scripture says. This is what I feel. I feel like Satan is not wanting us to have small businesses. I feel like the system is trying to choke that out because they can't control all these small businesses. And so they're trying to extinguish it. The world system is. Trying to, I feel like the spirit of this world is trying to stop creativity. I feel like the, the, the education system is not set up to encourage creativity. It's kind of like they make cookie cutters, people, you know. Kid, your kids are like cookie, instead of like finding out what their gifts are and their strengths and then routing them that way. So, the Spirit of God right now, I mean, just to give you an example, He just said to me, it's not over until I say it's over. Amen. That's what He just said to me. So, that's what I do. I mean, you know, my wife will hear me say that. I'll walk down the hallway. It's not over until I say I, I, He gives me phrases, and I have to make a transaction into this realm from the fire. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, all of your children will fulfill their books. All your children will come, they will come back. 
The angels will come and retrieve them and bring them back. God's going to wake them up. He's going to talk to them. God, you have to be this way. You have to prophesy. Come on. So I'll finish with this because the, I'll get back to the angels. The angels are standing here. They are at your home. They are waiting for you to yield to the Spirit of God and move into that phase which is walking in this all the time. And so now that I've told you this, you're not going to focus on just the fivefold. They are, they're, they're, they're assigned to build you up until you can walk in it. But after you're built up, then you go forth and minister. I, I bet you it's been 20 years since I've, I've gotten a word. I've asked for a word. I've gotten words, but I have never asked for one. When something happens, I don't go find an apostle or a prophet. I, I, I hit my knees and start praying in tongues, and then I interpret my tongues. I say, Lord, you know, you have, if you can confirm this, Lord, you know, have so-and-so call me, and they'll call me. I don't like preempt it. I don't like drop hints about anything. I let God do it. I let it be a miracle. But this is what I'm saying is, is this is gra your graduation into maturity is can you believe God to where you don't help him? And I'll tell you how I'll tell you how you can get over this and how you can be a master at this. You, you got to do things for people and they don't know about it. You got to do things for people that can't pay you back. You got to let you do something, not let your left hand know that your right hand did it. You, you have to you, you're, you're going to have to get to this place. You, you cannot tell God how he's going to reward you for what you've done. There are seven ways that God can do it. Not just the rich uncle you have. You got to stop. You got to stop this. God's your source. OK, so right now, all of us, I mean, I don't know what you're feeling. But I'm cooking. Okay, that fire from the altar is burning in me, but it's for you. Okay, so the only thing that I can think of to do is for everybody to stand up and hold hands, and then I'll hold hands here, and I will, I will believe that it will transfer through all of you. Okay, so this is going to happen. You're going you're gonna to get the fire, but you're going to have to keep this going yourself. And the best way to keep it going is to prophesy, is to say something from the other realm. And keep the fire going. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh dear Lord Jesus. Fire. Fire. Fire from the altar. Oh, Lord.
Spirit of God is on you, he's in you, and the Lord says, I am with you in a mighty way, and there is nothing that can withstand what I am doing in your life. Rejoice, rejoice, for the limits have been taken off. I command sickness to go, I command demons to go. I command you, you foul lying devils, we bind you. We turn this nation over to you. Lord, we repent. We turn this over to you. To your mighty works. Shake the heavens. We yield to that fire. Shake us, shake the heavens, Lord. Shake the governments. Can I have some water? <coughs> the Lord is healing bodies right now. Just receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Things are being corrected. Thank you. Okay, brain fog. Brain fog is leaving. In the name of Jesus. Clarity of thought. I command diabetes to go in Jesus' name. I command all the things that have to do with sugar. In the name of Jesus, I'm commanding your bodies to go back to normal. Hormone levels. High blood pressure must go in Jesus' name. Hormone levels must return to normal. I command your finances to correct. I take authority 
I take authority over your finances. I command all the things that are earmarked for you to come. They must come to you now. Supernatural finances come in Jesus' name. gosh. The new wine is being poured out right now. I can feel the Holy Spirit. The new wine. Drink. Drink. Enjoy the, the Lord right now. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's just keep stay in the spirit. Let's pray. Shabalatuna shtalete. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We give you the glory, Lord. We thank you. We say yes, Lord. Shalakilando Ramase. Let this fire spread, Lord. Let this fire spread. Let your glory go, Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all who dwell therein, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the, the earth will be covered with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The, thank you, Lord. Halakurreshe. Lift up your voices. Shareatorabasakurrabase. Orra mama socorra basa querieto. Orra bahayatai. More, Lord. Ha ha ha. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy, joy, joy. <clears throat> ha ha ha. Shate, hele. Ha ha ha. Joy, joy, joy. Ha ha ha, shata kale, oramase, moramaso, orekiatorase. The river must flow. The river must flow. The river must flow. Ha ha ha, he correshe, horrashefe, vorrasoto, ramashande, yasotore, vato corro, vote kete, rande, 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 rotoko, rava, ya. Bravo, cheve, turaneshe, ilaviando, rava sita vekete, orava vuso corravase, lord of borra babate, orava babaso, lift up your voice, ha ha ha, hallelujah, hallelujah, the shout of the king is amongst them. The shout of a king is amongst them. The shout of a king is amongst them. The shout of a king is amongst us. The shout of the king. Ha ha. Woo! The shout of the king. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, for the victory. 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 Just thank the Lord for the victory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Ha ha. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. Can a nation be born in a day? Yes. Hallelujah. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before you call, he answers. And while you are yet speaking, he will hear. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your covenant cut in the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We agree with everything you've prayed through us and done tonight, Lord. We thank you that it just started here, but it doesn't stop. So, Father, we just thank you that this work is sealed up. It is sealed up. It's sealed up in us. It's sealed up in this generation. It is sealed up in this place. And I thank you, Father, that we will never, ever go back. And I thank you, Lord, for acceleration now. Acceleration. Let all the gifts, all the gifts, all the books, all the talents, all the destiny be unlocked and released and everyone in this house and watching online in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen Alright <laughs> Praise God 
So listen, we're going to see you guys in the morning. We're going to start early, some around around 9.30-ish. We got some bags that need to go out. So go take the gospel into the streets. God bless you guys. Thank you.